श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः Today is the first class of our Ramayana. In this class we are going to start studying the scripture Ramayana from the first chapter which was written by Sage Valmiki. It's actually called Valmiki Ramayana. In Indian uh, mythology there are many types of Ramayana that we see pervading in India. And the oldest of all of them is Valmiki Ramayana. It's completely Sanskrit and it's completely full of the things that we always that we every day practice in our behaviors uh, whether it be social behavior family behavior spirituality this book this scripture dictates all the realms of life and today we are going to study this scripture right from the first chapter and so actually ramayana is also called the fifth veda there are four vedas that we know rig veda yajur veda atharva veda and the sam veda and ramayana due to its importance for people and humanity it's also called the fifth veda and today we're going to start from the first chapter and like gita which tells us about political matters about religious matters about humanity about social behaviors and also about spirituality the same way valmiki ramayana tells us how to live a life so that our lives get flourished our life becomes so that we can influence first ourselves and this journey goes on and on to throughout this world and influences everyone to be the person that they were sent here for we become the person first this entire existence helps us and starts loving us and this way we get loved by millions and millions of people by entire humanity who also observing us try to become the person that we become eventually so today before starting ramayana i want to tell you that the two books this ramayana valmiki ramayana and the gita these are the most read books in the world everyone should know this we today we talk about the most internationally selling books internationally selling authors but these two scriptures that we have in ourselves in our world this ramayana and gita these are the most read books throughout throughout the world and why because of their because of their importance for humanity because they are sufficient to teach human how to be a human because they are efficient enough to tell people why we are called the best creation of the creator we tell ourselves that we are the best creation of the creator and why is this said by people by us by our sages by wise people the scriptures narrate all the realms of life all the realms of truth all the realms of our existence and why are we here what is the cause that we are here so and in ramayana every time that we study the scripture always we see that something new i have got we have got and so always a fascination a eagerness and eagerness always remains in our hearts in our minds in our feelings and our emotions that we keep on reading the scripture because it's such a compelling and such a notable scripture that tells us all the fields that brings to us that takes us towards all the fields of existence of our lives of our behaviors whether it be social or emotional or public or leading us to the 
complete immortality through spirituality. Whatever we want to become, this Ramayana and all the scriptures, especially Bhagavad Gita, and all the scriptures that we would later come across, especially this Ramayana, because it's the class of Valmiki Ramayana, so we'd be studying this scripture precisely. And when we study this scripture, we see that Lord Rama is the center of the character, central character of this scripture. And all other characters converge on him, on them. Lord Rama, as we all know, were the prince of Ayodhya, the son of King Dashratha. And one more thing I'd like to tell you. Well, before we start the scripture, I would want to tell you that in Ramayana, we find this word Rama. And what, what does this word really mean? This word not only means Lord Rama, the son of King Dasharatha, we find several places in the scripture where this word Rama will take us to the Almighty resembles the Almighty God, the Eternal God. Because in Sanskrit, this word Rama is formed by the root Ramukridayam, which means when, when we form the word Rama from Ramukridayam, that means, it, the word especially means one who performs his actions everywhere. A mere person cannot do that. A lone person a person of body and flesh, of blood, cannot do that, cannot be present, cannot be omnipresent, cannot be omniscient, cannot be omni, it cannot be universal. So only one thing, only one object, only one existence that plays its role everywhere in this universe, in this world, in this entire existence is Almighty, is God. So this word Rama especially signifies, especially stands for the Lord, the God. And King Dashratha gave this name Rama to his son on the name of God. And his son, the one that we call Lord Rama, vindicated this name, vindicated the meaning of this name. He lived a life that was completely equalized to God and then and hence what he became, what he came up to be, Lord Rama. The one that we pray every day, that we prostrate every day. And it's our and from this thing, Lord Rama tries to teach us that every name that we get, especially in India, almost presumably, almost 98.5% people are named on various names that are mentioned in Vedas or Upanishads or Ramayana or Puranas. Those are all Sanskrit words. And those words have a great meaning in them. And whenever we are named, what does that mean? The name is a stair to pull us from where we are and to take us to the reality of what that name means. Name is just not just name, not just a, a medium for calling someone. It's a medium to take us to the place that we should be. And Lord Rama vindicated that. Lord Rama made it a reality and taught us that all people on this earth, every person in this earth, on this earth, can be the person that I am, can be the one that can uplift himself as I have uplifted myself and met my name a reality and prove the reality of my name. Like Lord Rama, we, all the people on this earth, can prove our reality, can prove the reality of our name, can prove the meaning of our existence, can prove the reason for why we were sent on this earth by the Creator, by the Lord Himself. So I have told, I told you that in this scripture we'd come across one word and that word according to the context 
Some word it'll describe Lord Rama, and some word it'll describe Almighty. So we, we'd pass through this word, and we'd move as we see what that name means. In the first three lessons, we'd especially read about the greatness of the scripture. It's a great scripture. The whole world, every person knows this, understands this, and believes this. It's a great scripture. And what is the greatness of the scripture? Before doing anything, we should know what is the greatness of the thing, what is the utility of the thing, how we should do it, how should we do it, and what is the process of doing it. So, before learning the scripture, before coming across the scripture, there are several verses that tell us what about who should hear it, how to hear it, when to hear it, how should be the state of mind when you hear the scripture. All these things will be narrated in the first three lessons of this scripture, and we'd pass through them. So, first of all, we'd move our way towards the first verse that is a prayer to Lord Rama. That is a prayer to Almighty. And in this verse, Lord Rama will resemble, this word Rama will resemble the Almighty. And you'll know why. I tell you. I will tell you. So the first verse says, Sri Rama, Sharanam, Samastha Jagatam. Sri Rama is the shelter, is the abode of the entire world, of the entire universe. This first stanza of this first verse tells us that Lord is the abode, is the shelter, is the home of this entire world, of this entire existence that we see around us. We are in the lap of God. We are His sons and daughters. We are His part. And this is the truth that this first stanza, first line of this verse tells us. This world, this existence, this cosmos, this entire realm that we see around us, it is lies in this God, in God, in Almighty, in the eternal power. And from here, from this line, we conclude that a mere person cannot be one, cannot be the one that where this entire world resides. resides. So here, Rama, this word Rama, tells and resembles, embodies Almighty. He is the shelter of everyone. He is the entire world is dependent on him. We believe it or not, we are run by some power that is running us. We are not alone in this earth. We don't do everything, anything without the consent of some power. Some believe it as God, some tell it God. Some an atheist people who don't believe in God, they tell it power, supernatural powers. So whatever you believe, you would have to believe this thing whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in anything or not, whether you are a theist or atheist, you have to believe there is some natural power, some, there is some supernatural power that's running us. You tell, I lift my own hands on my own will. But there is a will that is empowering you to make that will, make that wish, make that everything that forms a part of you, of your feelings, of your emotions. So we're talking about the first line of this first verse, Rama Sharanam Samast Jagatam. And I told you that God, Lord Rama, the Almighty, is the shelter and abode of this entire existence, of this entire universe that we see around us. And that we cannot see around us. Our eyes, the vision of our eyes, of this eyes is limited. And we cannot see everything. The thing that we experience and feel and see by our sensitive organs, by this body that we have got, is only maximum 5% of the maximum 2% of the existence that is, is the existence that we feel, that we see, that we visualize. 
and the rest 98% of it remains unseen, remains untouched, unfelt. And it is the vastness of this universe, the vast part of the universe remains untouched by any human activity, by any human being, because it cannot be seen by normal eyes. It requires great vision, great power to visualize all those, all those existences that, that are, that are present in this universe, in the vast realm of God. And all these powers, all these things that we see and we cannot see, all are laying, all are, all are lying in the lap of God. So the first line tells us about the power of God. He is the one who rules this nature. This entire nature is dependent on Him. The Upanishads also say this, that God is the one who is the leader of this entire universe. Look, we see this earth, the sun. Why to go far? Take our own solar system. And we know one thing, anything cannot exist without being made. We, we hold a cup, it was made by someone. We hold a bottle. It was made by someone somewhere. We hold anything in our hands. We see anything around us uh, artificial. That all those things are made by someone the same way. This earth is not a, is not a coexistence. It's not a, it just didn't happen spontaneously. This existence of Earth, the existence of Sun, the existence of planets, they didn't happen spontaneously. They were created by someone. Anything that exists was some, some time that was created by someone. And the Creator is the ruler of that thing. This entire universe was created by someone, by God. And so, He is the leader of this universe, of this existence. He is the Creator. He is the ruler, he is the nourisher, he is the he he uplifts this universe and he eventually destroys this universe. So he is the one that on whom this entire universe depends on. And then the narrator the poet says Raman Bina Kagatihi. Really. In this line, the poet says Ramam bina ka gati. And in Sanskrit, gati means, gati is a Sanskrit word, which means knowledge, locomotion, and achievement. Jan gaman prapti. If we have knowledge about something, then we make our attempt to move on, this, on the path of our knowledge and get something. And when we start moving, we start getting the results of the knowledge that we applied on the path that we walked through. And same way, this entire prospect of Gadi comes up this way. And the poet, Sage Valmiki, says that Ramam Bina Gagati. There is no knowledge, there is no locomotion, there is no achievement without God. There is nothing without God. Everything is, everything is proportional to how much godly existence is there, how much we are tilted towards God, that much we are fulfilled in our life. Only wealth and position and prestige doesn't make any sense. We'd see, you'd see many people around yourselves who have lots of money, lots of opulence, lots of proficiency in their fields, but they are still unhappy. Why? There is somewhere, there is absence of God, of devotion, of prayer, of dedication, of feeling a complete surrender to God. So the poet says that all the progress that we make in our life, whether it be social progress, whether it be economic progress, whether it be spiritual progress, whether it be the progress of knowledge, everything is dependent on God. Everything is possible because there is a power that helps us do anything that we want, that tells us to do anything that comes in us, 
He is the power. He is the influential power that influences our mind, that carries our mind through the thoughts that, that we make reality. And before making and for making that those things a reality, He is the one that gives us the power to walk on our knowledge and get the achievement of our lives. Everything, anything we achieve is due to God. We achieve this body. One thing I want to tell you, we achieved this body. It was the favor of God. We achieved these brains. We achieved this knowledge. Favor of God. We achieved this good looking face and everything else. It was the favor of God. We achieved wealth. We achieved anything. Anything we achieve. It's the favor of God. We achieve this entire good environment on this earth. Good atmosphere. It is the favor of God. Nothing occurs without His favor. Everything is favorable when God is with us. So, Sage Valmiki is saying, Ramam Binakagatihi. So, there is nothing, nothing is possible if God is not there. And nothing is impossible if there is an existence of God in our lives, in ourselves in our feelings, in our emotions, in our entire existence. And the second and next line, the sage is saying, Ramena Pratihanyate Kalimalam. As we see in this today's world, there is a lot of dirtiness, thoughtfully, and in the people's actions, in the people's thoughts, in the people's minds, we see a lot of dirtiness. And how could the dirtiness of our minds, of our behavior, of our entire whatever we do in our life can can be wiped out? And so Sage Valmiki says us, tells us that only one medication I have, and only one medication is there to remove, to wipe out all the dirtiness of your minds, of your body, of your soul, of your existence, and that is Rama. Behaving, everything, whatever this is, whatever, whatever shit, whatever uh, dirtiness you find in your lives, there is only one medication to, to, to clean it, to cleanse yourself, and that is Lord Rama, that is Almighty, that is the name of Almighty. And how could it be the medication? Then it says, how could we near, how could we bring ourselves nearer to Lord, to the God? And then the state says that be a yogi. Yogastha Guru Karmani Sangam Tattva Dhananjaya Siddhya Siddhya Samabhutva Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. It's the path. First heart, our journey needs to be started from somewhere. And this is its starting point from where we could start our journey and get the love, get the caring, caring hands, get the nourishing hands of our Father. And we could remove all the darts of our life. We'd study how the sage discussed the next lines of his of this scripture in the next class. Till then, we'd all right. We'd study the next lines, the next uh, paragraph of this verse in the next class. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.